AI, robotics, autonomous vehicles, renewable energy, smart cities, gene editing, geoengineering. These emerging technologies can transform how we live our lives, how we organize society, and even what it means to be human. Yet how do we ensure that such advances are truly progress? New discoveries raise complex questions that need to be explored not just in a technological sense, but in social and ethical senses as well. So many of the contemporary problems that we're facing today, whether it's about trying to find ways to manage climate disruption or how it is we can preserve our human dignity in the face of AI and automation, or even how we think about making wise choices when we have these new powers to edit our genetic heritage. We really need new thinking. We need new imaginations. We need ways to approach these problems drawing in from a lot of different disciplinary perspectives. And so it's not about just understanding the technology and what the exact scientific invention is, but it's more about trying to think about technology in society and how our social values matter, about how different political priorities come in to infuse the technology in new ways. Thinking about innovation in the context of society is really important because the technologies that we decide to create and use are really influenced by our culture, by the society we live in, and then once we start using them, they really influence our society as well. And so really thinking about technologies as being embedded in society and influenced by society is an important perspective. In our work, we really think it's important that we have a broad range of people that are thinking about the social and ethical implications of technologies. And that's because those questions are really different depending on who you are, how you live, what your values are. And so there's no one set of experts that can kind of figure out what those questions are and answer them. We all need to think about innovation socially as well as technologically. We need to rephrase the question from how can we to how should we innovate. True innovation is really interesting because some of it is not all that intentional. Things get created, innovations happen, and then they're adapted by society or rejected by society. Not all innovations actually become part of our life. Some move forward because they have economic benefits for some folks. Some of them move forward because everybody wants to adapt them because it makes their lives easier or it makes their lives more enjoyable. Some innovations happen to actually prolong our lives and help society as a whole. So there's a concept called innovation in society. It can also be called technology in society. And this concept is incredibly important because what it does is it recognizes that technology and society are not separate things. That when you have technological change, you also have social and ethical and political change. And that recognition means that attention to society, attention to ethics, attention to law needs to go along with attention to the underlying scientific and technical parts of the innovation. We're at a point where the way we address innovation is not just by asking what can we do, but by asking what is it that we should do and how should we do it and universities with the vast array of different disciplines with the presence of social science and humanities, not just science and engineering, are quite capable and even uh, historically have done an excellent job in raising these should questions. Uh, and because there are so many of these ethical and social questions that move along with the scientific and technical questions, we need to be asking how should we be doing this, not just how can we do this. We need to be asking these questions with scientists and engineers together with humanists and artists and social scientists. How should we be innovating? How should we be facing the future? Arizona State University's School for the Future of Innovation in Society, or SFIS, believes at its core, the future is for everyone. Started from one of the world-leading think tanks, SFIS knows innovative enterprises can be more attuned and responsive 
to the public interest. SFIS is preparing students for the future by giving them tools, tools that allow them to engage themselves, to understand themselves and their wants and desires, but also those of others as they're visioning what the future could look like. We are developing courses and research programs that challenge traditional models of engineering education. We are developing ways in which to get engineers to think about how to engage more effectively, more thoughtfully with traditionally marginalized societies. We are also thinking about ways to develop tools of transparency in decision-making processes. So if we're doing community-based work, how do we ensure that the voices of the communities that we care about engaging are actually being heard and affecting the kinds of technological decisions that engineers are making? We're thematizing the future for our students, helping them understand that one can think in sophisticated, consistent, and rigorous ways about the future, and therefore allowing them to be better participants in future making. SFIS trains dynamic, creative people to address future challenges today so we can innovate responsibly in all our human endeavors. SFIS is planning for the future of innovation by expanding who gets to innovate. Innovation is not just a territory of engineers anymore. So we're combining art with science and technology for new ways of thinking, new ways of communicating, and new ways of inventing. We are working to train the next generation of future savvy students, professionals, researchers, really trying to ramp up their anticipatory capacity. We also envision the center as a, a sandbox for experimentation, where we get to test out new tools and methods for foresight and really try to think about what are the most important types of critiques in order to nudge innovation in positive directions. To learn more, contact us today.